Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this explainer video, we are going to get two of our usual suspects in the field of digital piano, namely the RD88 and the Yamaha CK88, to have a royal rumble or a absolute battle between each other. These two keyboards have been the industry standard keyboards digital pianos slash I would even uh, venture out and say MIDI controllers to buy and I'm going to talk about why these features are very important as I have both of them to demo today and both these keyboards fall well under 1500 US dollars or around 1 to 1 1.2 lakhs Indian rupees okay so the reason I have them is a plenty it's not just because of the cost, the cost is a factor, yes, because if I have to, let's say, buy a Yamaha Montage, which is, you know, the ultimate so-called uh, keyboard arranger workstation, A, it's too heavy, and B, it's about five times the cost of what I have now, and it doesn't sound any better. The ones I have already sound good, you know, and it's very easy to move around, very portable, and maybe s some of us don't need so many features. We prefer our computer, we prefer our DAW to also help us with the soundscaping or the, the management of presets and patches as you call it. First of all, before I make a case for these two keyboards, I'm going to talk about what we are definitely going to rule out in our discussion. We will talk about cheaper keyboards, we will talk about same priced stuff as well, or similarly priced stuff. But we, we are going to rule out a few things. What are they? We are going to rule out grand pianos, which tend to cost about maybe upwards of forty to 50,000 US dollars. That's a lot of money. You'll also have to manage them. Up, uh, upright piano. So if you want a feel of a real piano or that experience of playing a real instrument, and maybe if you already have one, hats off to you. I'm in no ways saying that you know, this this setup is better than a grant. The reason why I'm talking to this is what you're going to see uh, throughout this video. So stay tuned. First of all, we are not going to talk about grand pianos, Not nor are we talking about real pianos which are upright in nature. We are not going to talk about what I call as furniture pianos that use fairly average quality wood to make them because of budget. The, the wood itself can get cracked uh, and it's Again, impossible to carry, overly priced, and to be honest, the furniture pianos, as I call them, actually sound bad when compared to what I'm going to show you today. So, uh, yeah, grand pianos and uprights, the other concern with them, transportation, as you know, becomes near impossible, but also you'll need a piano tuner. So you need to find your local genius because tuning a piano is an art form. So you don't have too many piano tuners out there, at least in the south. I think I can just name two and we've had a bad experience with one. So that leaves me with just one. So uh, yeah, having a real piano in a in a place which is very humid might also need a humidifier. So you need a lot of things to to go well for you to have an actual piano. So for the remaining lot of us who still want to play piano, and I've had some great history of playing a real piano as well. My first house when we grew up, there was this beautiful upright piano which my granddad, uh, Walter Nathaniel, inherited from the British reign ruling time. You know, So he they gave him that piano and that was our house piano. It was a bit tough to play it was a bit point it was a bit sharp I used to cut my fingers a lot but it was what I learnt with so I will in no ways talk ill of a actual piano except for the cost and the portability you know because uh, those are real world issues so coming to clavinovas which you see a lot in schools and churches again i don't recommend clavinovas supremely heavy you need a lot of labor to move it around and they don't sound any better than what we are talking about today so what to rule out what i'm not going to talk about in this video 
on on not fight with at all a grand pianos upright pianos furniture pianos with cheap quality wood and clavinovas so the first point i want to address is why on earth do i have both i am not endorsed by either roland or yamaha but why do i have both it's not because i just ended up getting both there's a specific reason so one piano i keep in my studio as a kind of a permanent setup where it's all routed and connected to my studio setup the audio cables are patched the midi cables are patched so it's set up for production the moment i put my computer on i can record produce music and it's quick even if i want to get the onboard sounds i can so currently my yamaha ck88 becomes the studio keyboard but it could so easily change because both keyboards have almost the same features and they are super light so one person can just carry it and move it around it's it's very easy and the other keyboard will go for gigs for shoots so if i'm doing some production work which is very urgent right now with this keyboard i can have the other keyboard packed and it's already at the venue so if i have an assistant the assistant will set it up on stage and keep it ready and i can continue doing my work and just head over there for the sound check or whatever so i really need two keyboards plus my mom is a church musician so we need to take one of these out on sundays for our church service so many reasons and also if we have a party if if i'm going to a friend's house another reason why i have both of these is i can pick up either of these they are they both fit in a they could even fit in an auto they are very light and a fun fact the cost of both of these will still not even come close to the cost of a nord or a yamaha montage it'll not not even come close and it gives me the best of the patches from roland and it gives me the best of the patches from yamaha so that's a fun fact that's something to keep in mind so you don't need those fancy keyboards i those arranger workstations which i'm not going to talk about because it's very scary there are too many buttons drums could play out of nowhere during a sad theater moment you know and you they'll all play you obviously so you need to be a bit careful with those arranger keyboards very tough to set up and not fun if you're a piano player if you ask me we'll cut that out some people will no we should keep that so now i come to why i chose these specific two keyboards which were within my budget of 1500 us dollars first of all i've already mentioned both are lightweight portable a uh, great for carrying for gigs and also managing flight costs the weight of these is almost the same around 29 to 30 28 to 29 pounds one person can carry it for your gigs very easy and you can get a easy keyboard bag rain proof protective case made for it uh, and secondly both are ridiculously simple to use you put it on there's already inbuilt speakers so you'll get your favorite piano sound you can change it around to whatever else you want you want electric pianos clavinets organs strings wire you have all your basic sounds you have a favorite section with a bank so you can just set up exactly what you want pretty much every day if i do the same thing on the yamaha ck88 again it's the same piano organ brass section guitars strings and so on so you it's very easy to use very easy to just get started immediately as i mentioned earlier both have inbuilt speakers with their own speaker eq i re- i learned that after buying it actually so you can actually eq the sound of the piano to your heart's content you have an eq for the yamaha ck88 right here and for roland you just have to go to the settings and you can figure that out so when you're jamming with different musicians uh, you also have a uh, eq when it's on a table and when it's on a stand so that's really cool if you ask me uh, then both have notation stands so if you if you're a reader if you read music you can uh, but it doesn't come with the keyboard which is rather unfortunate so you'll have to buy that separately uh, both offer line and mic level input so what that will allow you to do if you are a singer and you want to do small gigs you can plug in a guitar into your keyboard you can plug in a mic and and just sing 
So you can perform a gig where the output of your keyboards, either of these, will also be your band. It can be keyboard plus one guitar and one singer, which could be you or your friend. So that's a very cool feature. Uh, both are trusted brands. Yamaha and Roland are probably the oldest piano manufacturing or keyboard digital manufacturing brands. And both feel absolutely awesome. They feel... Sometimes they might feel even better than a real piano. They just have some great, great touch. And the feel is very inspiring for both, in my opinion. Uh, Kurzweil comes close. I really love Kurzweil as well. Um, Nods are okay. Casios I don't like. Cog is okay. So I really love the feel of these for my kind of playing. That might be subjective, but in my opinion, Yamaha and Roland are tried and tested brands. They have great feel. You can just go with anything. You can even go for the basic Yamaha keyboard or the basic Roland FP series keyboard or the Yamaha P45 and even that will feel beautiful. Both have live sets for very easy and quick gigs. So you just press any of your buttons and your patches just show up for your concerts. You can do a quick show with just pressing these buttons. So you're playing piano, you want to go to electric piano, you want to do clav, organ, it's all there. And on the Yamaha, I guess it's a bit more easier to manage. You can go to your uh, own bank and in your own bank, you can adjust the sound. So this is my first patch. Something you could use in a church. Then something in more in a rock band. Something jazzy. So you get the idea. You have these, both have live sets which are great for, for doing shows. No need to go into settings and find things and select different categories and yes there are banks and so on but it's very easy to set up it took it took us in the studio about five minutes to just get this up and running and it was very inspiring uh both work great for old school five pin din midi as well as usb connectivity so a lot of the midi controllers out there a lot of the more cheaper ones or even the expensive ones might forget to give you a basic five pin midi din port which has been around for years so you need both very very important the scalability and the usability will will be will be multiple cases the other thing i'd like to point out with both of these is they don't have all your touch pads and all your flimsy knobs and faders they're all pretty heavy duty uh, so I think they will last. I don't have to get a tech to fix this and I can trust them to work. Like A lot of these MIDI controllers, if you start hitting them after a couple of years, you know, tapping them, they start sending MIDI messages which can be tracked by any basic uh, uh, DAW. So you can find that, oh, my keyboard is sending wrong signals. It's sending in a MIDI which I don't want it to send. So uh, I don't really recommend the MIDI controllers out there maybe arturia keylab 88 or native instruments complete a control 88 those are i've played on those i still don't like the feel to be honest but those are good but again supremely heavy and i think a waste i i'd rather get something like this because i can put it on it works i can get all my patches i can even record those patches because they sound great and MIDI is right there. You can even hit the assign button, for example, on the Roland or on the Yamaha. It just works. And all of these now work as MIDI uh, send control, continuous control messages to your DAW. You can use this to even control your digital audio workstation. So one thing I found is Roland, Yamaha and all these so-called so keyboard and digital piano making brands, they don't talk about themselves as MIDI controller people. They don't brand it as a MIDI controller. But deep down, this is very much a MIDI controller. There's nothing wrong about it for doing MIDI work. So now, 
we've set up the stage we've kind of introduced the two boxers into the ring and we've talked good about both of them now we need to actually compare them and see who is better and who wins because if you are trying to buy one which is the one that might work for you so i'm going to do this in three stages first of all i'm going to do an actual tech comparison where it's not my opinion it's just what the tech says it's what your keyboard manufacturer actually has given you in the manual and has portrayed on their company website and i can tell you since i have both whether that's true or false then i'm going to talk to you about why each keyboard destroys each other or why you would want this over the other in terms of the small things to keep in mind as well as the big things very important uh, game changing things so stay tuned till the very end for the Uh, game changing big things to keep in mind so let's do a basic comparison between these two instruments by going to sweetwater.com sweetwater is a great place to check out products even if you are an indian like me uh so i've just put both these keyboards in the comparison chart let me try and zoom in a little bit for you there we go so yamaha CK88 is on the left, Roland RD88 is on the right. So first off you'll see the costing varies. You'll find the uh, CK88 is a bit expensive, but I found in India it's pretty much very similarly priced. Now both are stage pianos, which is great. The sound engine, I have not understood this so much, but in the with the little I know the yamaha kind of wins here so basically yamaha has dedicated organ flute so for example if you put pull up an organ patch all of these will work just like how you would be playing a traditional organ a h i would presume stands for hammond so you can bring out your drawbars the lows and the highs i tend to be a bit cautious about the major third which is the uh 3 3 by 5 because if you play a minor chord sounds a bit annoying so, so so you can do a nice real world control you can adjust your rotary which is your leslie speaker settings you can even stop the leslie intermittently then you can have percussion can adjust the harmonics which the percussion is giving you is it giving you the second harmonic or the third harmonic is it soft or fast so it basically makes the keyboard a lot more clickier and adds that extra percussion layer and then of course you can drive it further by well adding some drive You have two kinds of drive. This is more deep purple kind of. So Yamaha definitely scores over the Roland in that department. Type of keys, GHS that stands for Graded Hammer Action Keyboard. So I've even tested this for fun in the studio with people who don't play piano, and even they have kind of accepted that the. lower keys just like a real piano are a lot harder to play than the upper keys so the upper keys so it kind of emulates an actual piano uh so if you're looking at graded hammer action yamaha wins roland does not offer graded hammer action but both the fields are incredible so you can consider either of the two pha4 is what roland offers it's still a great feel uh in fact i love playing on the roland still till today even after getting this second i still enjoy the roland um roland has this thing called escapement where if you play something soft it kind of you feel that force or that recoil hitting you uh while the yamaha is a bit more it it just it it feels like you've it doesn't come back at you so if that's a small feature you prefer you can go with the roland uh yamaha has pretty much the same mod wheels as roland yamaha has uh <clears throat> mod wheels faders and pitch bend so does the roland both have sufficient amounts of each 
both have enough and more presets so i wouldn't compare and contrast both have very good effects both have great audio input connectivity both have audio outputs and uh, by the way both are also audio interfaces both of them are usb audio devices so you can use either of these connected to your laptop and produce music both of them have headphone connectivity both of them can send usb what i like about the yamaha ck88 to point out the ck88 has midi in midi out as well as usb roland rd88 has only midi out so it doesn't have midi in so what i have to do or what i end up doing here is i play a key on the roland i take a midi cable and i send it to the yamaha but i can't do it the other way around so that's a bit Roland could have easily put another one I guess. Uh coming to Bluetooth this is where Yamaha really scores. You can basically play a song on your Spotify or YouTube or whatever from your phone. Bluetooth pair it to this keyboard, play it on the keyboard speakers which are really awesome and just jam, just practice or just listen, have some fun. So that may be a game changer for some of you. Uh pedal inputs Uh, are good enough for both if you ask me yes roland in uh, on the site it's talking a lot but pedal inputs are there there's foot pedals there's sustain you can set it up as expression damper soft pedal whatever pedal settings are great pedal included this may be a game changer uh, the roland has a dp10 which is a great continuous control pedal but the yamaha doesn't even give you a crappy switch pedal so they have nothing you don't get a pedal you have built in speakers which are both the same rating amplifier same rating uh, the rest is all small stuff a uh, power supply uh, when i bought the ck88 the adapter was not included and i think that's the case maybe it's not the case for you but in either either ways the roland AC adapter is incredible it's a proper looks very well built the yamaha adapter is absolute i mean it, it's really bad to be honest so the yamaha adapter and the yamaha pedal which isn't even didn't even come is a problem was a problem and the stores also didn't know about this when i called them I, they they said yeah we gave you the keyboard where's the pedal i said there's no pedal well then we went to the site and apparently yamaha doesn't send the pedal why yamaha why do you do that coming to the dimensions and the weight the height of the roland rd88 is strangely very very annoying for me in a studio so the depth of the roland is very less compared to a normal keyboard it's just about uh, 10 cm if i'm not yeah it it's just 10 inches as sweetwater t- tells us so well you can't put a cup of coffee on this and the speakers are right on on top of that so i wouldn't put anything on it so you don't get any place to put stuff on uh and it's super tall but then the advantage of this is it works very well in a small table environment the yamaha ck88 is more normal like a more normal digital piano the height or the 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 height is normal it's just 5.8 inches as it says the width is perfectly fine i would think the width of this is a bit more than the roland because it's tough for my hand to actually go and find things uh but the 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 depth is a lot it's 14 inches so to get to the cables in a desk like environment might be very tricky so if you're using a desk you may want to prefer this but then this is a high in the first place so it's a double edged sword so to speak so coming to my final thoughts on why you might want this over that or vice versa first of all a few small things i may have mentioned that later when i was sharing you the tech specs the rd88 pitch wheel really really bad really even the mod wheel it's so small it feels like it's going to break and there's no give it's just so much so So if you're a synth player you're going to hate this but then having said that midi controllers have become horrible with their uh, pitch and mod studio logic has some weird joystick thing cog has changed i just like the old school pitch bend which the yamaha keyboard offers so on the yamaha 
if I just find a basic lead patch, I can go. I really like that drop of the pitch. And lot more expression when you're modulating. Lot more options. It's a very old school pitch and mod. I don't know why people change pitch and mod wheels for no reason. Come on, Roland. You could have done a bit better there. The CK88 small thing, as I told you earlier, it's great for placing things on it. So here, if you want to put a book or anything really, it's nice. It's easier to work with or maybe a basic clock or a computer mouse. If you're into production, you can put your mouse here, put a little bit of a rubber pad and you can do your work on that itself. The CK88 has a lot more knobs and faders for MIDI. So if you set it up really well, you can do a lot of work for MIDI. You can get pretty much anything to send MIDI data to the computer. Of course, you have to enable that in settings. Uh, Roland, in my opinion, since I prefer something more simpler, I would love to use, I would prefer something like this on stage because it's very well designed for live playing. It's just near my hand. So I can control it very easily. So I prefer the roll in there in my, op my humble opinion. This I've already mentioned earlier, the action is subjective. You get the roll in 88 being a lot more harder action. Whatever your touch settings are, the action will still be a bit harder because it's not getting easier as the upper keys are being touched. While the Yamaha, it gets a lot more easier when you play upper. As I'm testing right now, I think the Yamaha is a lot easier. This is the same with all Yamahas from the basic P45 till the very end montage stuff. The other thing I learned after buying it, if this was an additional bonus, is the CK88 is battery powered. That may be huge for some of you who have power shortage issues. You just have to put in a few batteries and it's gonna work completely fine. So this huge monster of a thing can be run on basic batteries. So that's something to keep in mind. And lastly, the DAW line levels, the line output levels coming from the Roland, I couldn't find a way to adjust them. But on the Yamaha, it's very easy to adjust depending on the devices you use. The line levels can be adjusted very well. That may be a small thing. Now coming to the big things, the game changers, what you might really find very important. First of all, you're already spending a lot for these two things and Yamaha doesn't give you any pedal. And at least in uh, India buying it, they didn't give me an adapter as well. And no one told me which adapter to get. It was completely not mentioned to the distributors or the dealers. No one knew. So I would encourage Yamaha to just consider this and give people a, a pedal. And also there's no knowledge of the pedal. So if you're giving a a pedal with such a good keyboard, it's a great keyboard, you might as well recommend your customer and just insert it, charge a bit more and get them this pedal. This is by Yamaha itself, ironically. It's FC3A. This works so well with this. This has half damper. Now for a newer person, they may not know this stuff. They would want this annoying switch pedal which looks like a sustain pedal. Or earlier, Yamaha used to give those tiny switches which, my man, I've never used that for anything useful in my life. Remember, you're giving the user a proper, great feeling piano. This has escapement, this has graded hammer action. Why do you give such crappy pedals and also why do you not give pedals in this case? And no adapter also. So that was a problem. You might want to check with your store before buying it. Maybe they will package it differently. Maybe that experience works out. But if you're getting a pedal, get a FC3A. Don't get an FC4A, that's just a switch. FC3A is a proper piano pedal. So get this, it's worth that extra 800 or 1000 rupees. Yeah, and then the next game changer for me, at least I'm considering this for live, would be CK88 can manipulate three patches at the same time. And the RD88 can do two, but it's very, very basic. RD88 is like your normal uh, digital piano in that sense. You have these three knobs 
which are assigned for live sets now by default when you put it on your piano would be on one then i have two more so i just have to hit this on and maybe select another patch which is something in this case called a bell pad one and you can control the volume of that separately right here you can adjust the split of that the way it is split you can even adjust the split point of the keyboard if you want to do like a bass in in part c and the colors are initially i hated the colors because they were too bright but i see why they've made it so bright because it's very easy to find your settings because if you do bell pad whatever settings you do for the bell pad maybe you want to do a chorus that will apply only for the bell pad and leave the piano untouched so if i mute the bell pad you come back to good old piano so if you are in an environment where you just want three faders next to you and you have of course faders are a bit far away i would prefer them a bit closer but i guess that's the design which will work in uh, in the long run uh i can maybe assign this to a pad assign this to a string uh, section and do a gig maybe uh, in in if if you're doing this in in church you can bring in an organ you can bring in a pad you can bring in a choir doing some oohs and ahs uh is very tough to do on the rd88 rd88 is more just a simple interface it's it's great but it's a simple interface so if you want to manipulate up to 3 sounds with some insane splitting split point capabilities dual voice in this case triple voice go in for the yamaha ck88 so in in a nutshell i think the big things would be the overall cost and the overall research you have to put in to get a yamaha keyboard working for you the, maybe in my case the indian guys didn't uh, help much but i don't know so you need to check while the roland will come with the pedal it will come with a great adapter and it works from the word go uh, that could be a big thing to consider and the other thing would be i guess for some of you folks who like to do organ for some of you folks who like to do a proper pitch and mod then roland won't work then you have to go with ck88 so these are my thoughts about the two currently trending keyboards and by currently i think they've been trending for at least 4 3 4 years now and if you go to sweetwater or any gear website they'll still be the 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 first searched keyboards out there and the reason i bought them is not only because of the the brand value and uh, the hype around it and all of that i wanted it for the reasons i have already told you uh, there are some digital pianos which are superb which will get a mention any time or any day of the week by me but they won't have a pitch and mod wheel i also play synth so i need that there may be some piano midi controllers out there which are supremely great but then they don't have a basic uh, uh, set of sounds on board so then why would you get that how will you use it for just entertaining your friends for a, a a dinner so what i find with both these keyboards is they serve all my use cases i can play them at home i can take them to take either of them to church i can get my mom to play on them which is very important i can do gigs and trust these knobs and faders for midi on either um however i could do another video after maybe a few more months or a year telling you uh, my thoughts after really using them but i have used them for a sufficient amount of time now to be able to speak about them and these are not new and i did a lot of research i didn't i didn't just get it off the shelf it uh, i did a lot of research and got these two things so hopefully these thoughts help you make a decision to not necessarily buy these two keyboards i'm not in any way saying you have to get these two you can always get something simpler for your requirements final thoughts after all this ranting there might be a way better keyboard down the line that's the thing with electronics and technology so this video may be pretty irrelevant after a year or two but then stay tuned to our channel maybe i'll do another gear review of another keyboard uh, which comes out but uh, i did decided to do this because i'm quite passionate about these two keyboards and i want to share it with a lot of my students and i believe that it'll work for a lot of cases a lot of use cases in a studio just for the hobbyist in church or at a at a at the rigors of a live show where you want to 
protect your back you want to reduce your flight bills and so on and so forth these are very i would call these as i guess rugged workhorse keyboards from very tried and tested manufacturers so i hope you found these insights useful do stay tuned to our channel for future videos like these and if you'd like me to review anything else or you know talk about something tech which you're finding a doubt with do leave us your suggestions in the comments and we will take it from there cheers and catch you in the next one